Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. I didn't throw my hands at the camera like my wife always complains about. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we were in the land of beautiful food, beautiful art, and terrible Americanized French accents. <laughs> this week we were in France doing our, our around the world journey with Torchlight and Build Your Library. We had a great week. We you know, saw the sights, we did all the things. Yeah, I think it was about a week and a half. Yeah. We had a couple main focuses this, uh, this round. We always try to focus on two or three main things since we are working with a kindergartner. So this week, week we focused on artists. Mm -hmm. So Monet, Degas, we looked at lots of pictures of the Louvre, talked yeah. about Mona Lisa and the other, the other works of art at the Musée d'Orsay. So mm -hmm. we did a lot about artists and then we focused a lot on Paris because there's a lot of great things to look at and our daughter is just fascinated Absolutely. with the City of Lights. So. Absolutely, yeah. We, um, one of the fun things that she's been getting into lately is Google Maps. She thinks it's the one most amazing app on the planet. <laughs> so I gave her Google it Maps really and she was, she was going on little tours around France and stuff like that. It was really, really fun. It's a nice little addition. So, Get into the books? Yeah, All right, here's our book it. review for France. So, Greetings from Somewhere, The Mystery of the Stolen Painting. Mm, this is the Torchlight book selection. This is part of the Greetings from Somewhere series. So if you're working through Torchlight, you've already read a bunch of these. These don't need to be read in order. Sometimes they make reference to a previous adventure that they had, mm -hmm. but otherwise, no. These are terrific books, lots of great pictures, not too long. You can read them in one, what, 30 minutes sitting? Yeah, about 30, 40 minutes sitting. So if you can break it up over you know, two sittings if you have to, or mm. if you have a focused kid who can sit there. We um, read this in one sitting. Our yeah. daughter loves these books. Yeah, if some of you still have sunshine, you can sit outside. It might be a great, great read. We're, we're getting the rain in the, in the Seattle area. So um, this was really good. You liked yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This was fantastic. All right. So Always the, good. The next one is Lelena the Monet's Garden. Yeah, Lelena and Monet's Garden is a recommendation from Build Your Library. I believe it's recommended in the new version if not it's from the older version i had the older one before the 2020 update so sometimes i get confused this is a fictional story of a girl who goes with her neighbor her older neighbor that was a little strange to visit monet's house in giverny uh that's probably pronounced poorly i'm sorry um and don't apologize they talk all Lean about monet it. and his life and his art um that was really good i felt overall the book was a little bit drier my daughter mm -hmm. didn't latch on to this one i think that next go around I, I did buy the book for this term and i think next go around i probably will skip it mm -hmm. so um if you want to get it and you want to read about parts you could maybe just skip to the point where they actually visit um you know his house and things but beautiful artwork though right? yeah there's great yeah. artwork in it it might be good to check out from the library i wouldn't buy this book because i just think it was a little bit dated and dry my daughter didn't love it but that's not to say that your children won't well, and, you know, France is known for food, so let's bring uh, the resident uh, Italian <laughs> in for Giada de Laurentiis. So this is a series by Giada. Giada didn't write it. It's written by somebody else. Yeah. But it's these recipe for adventure, and there's several of them. There's New Orleans and Naples, and this one is Paris, and it's about a couple of kids that get magically transported to Paris um, from their great aunt Zia's cooking. So, you know, she makes something and then they get magically transported and they have to figure out how to get home. So that was kind of cool. I like the magical element, but mm -hmm. overall it was about a lot of food yeah. and it talked about lots of different kinds of recipes and it was had good messages of teamwork and, you know, trying not, not being an all-star, like working for everyone. And our daughter couldn't get enough of this book. Yeah. She wanted to read it constantly, um, and she's almost six. So I really recommend these. They do come with a couple of recipe cards in the back. So this one comes with a recipe for crepes and one for hot chocolate, and they're actually perforated so that you can break them out and use them later. Um, so I'm really excited. We have the one for Naples. Mm -hmm. So when we go to yeah. Italy, we're going to read the, this series again. I think there may only be like five or six books in this series, but our daughter absolutely loved it. So if you're a foodie family too, you might check out recipe for adventure books. Absolutely. It's a very cute story. Ariel tends to read more of the chapter books. I tend to do the kids' books more more often than not. Right. Ariel. <coughs> this, don't do it. Who is your favorite podcaster? <laughs> is your it, favorite French now? Is it me? <laughs> Escargo. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have Escargo and, and we have Escargo too. a book for Escargo. <laughs> These are the cutest freaking books that we've ever seen. <laughs> Get these. If your library doesn't have it, buy one of these. I like this one more. He liked this one I more. Like it doesn't one, matter. Yeah. It's about a cheeky French snail. <laughs> it's, perfect. it's a perfect definition for him, <laughs> too. cheeky. And he goes through the book talking to, uh, talking to the reader 
Uh, yeah, it's a fourth wall. So I love books that break the fourth wall and allow the reader to yeah. kind of come back to. You see this on a lot of YouTube videos with we, we've recommended Katie's Classroom and things of that nature in the past. When they talk to you, like Daniel Tiger does it, when they talk to this, yeah. the kid, it, it really brings them in. And, and Escargo does this in both of these books. These are funny books. It's funny because he he's he's all after a salad with a light vinaigrette in this book. And now... <laughs> and all, all week it was salads with light... She, our daughter our wanted Our daughter salad. wanted nothing but light vinaigrette. She goes, where's the light vinaigrette? <laughs> We'd be like, okay, well, we can get you a vinaigrette. And she goes... I go, don't you want a ranch? You love ranch. She's like, no, no, mommy, a life in a grant. No carrots. No carrots. Which is she loves in the carrots, book. Yeah. So these are so cute. You must check out one of these books. One, one we highly I, recommend them. I go with this one. You like I like this one. this one better. I mean, either one if your library has it or yeah. pick one up and buy it. We'll put links in the show notes. These Absolutely. are great. Um, these the, were these my are, favorite. These were everything for me. We read these, I don't know, the, four these, times yeah, or these something. Have, yeah, these have me. rapidly become one of our favorite books in this whole this whole journey yeah I, I yeah. love this i think we may pick up one one or both of these books yeah. um personally because they're so good yeah they're just it's so cute it's so, <laughs> cute. so good um madame martine this is really cute this is about uh, an old woman and she has the same routine every day and she's kind of like set in her ways and then she gets a little dog who's a stray, comes to her, and then they start going on adventures throughout Paris. Mm -hmm. And so every day they do something new and it's about breaking out of your comfort zone and doing new things and exploring. It had good messages and had all these great sights from Paris. And yeah. um, I just really like this yeah, book. A great way to, to pair kind of the famous monuments and famous locations yeah. and as you go around with her. Yeah, right, great. it was great. Absolutely. We really liked it. Um, so going back with our painters, we did a little Monet. This time we're doing Degas. This was really cute. So this is um, Degas and the little, I think this is the little, da and the little dancer, yeah. 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 Um, that's the title. So this is the story of the famous sculpture in the Louvre, the little dancer. And it, it just talks about her story and, and her being a ballet dancer and how she worked with the artist. And it was just really moving. I think that, you know, my daughter really got a sense of, of kind of what's behind art that it's not just a painting that yeah. there was somebody who lived a life that they painted and that, they, that person had a story and I thought that was really great this was well, a and, terrific <clears throat> book for talking about artists yeah. and not just the painter has a story but also the painting or the, or the that's what or I the, mean the medium the, has the, the subject yeah. has a story I mean yeah. I, sometimes I feel like we talk so much about the painter we don't talk about the subject and that's what this book was all about and our daughter just really identified with this little girl she's also a dancer our daughter and she loves to dance and so she really could just connect with that, and mm -hmm. I thought this was a this was a really lovely book. I yeah. definitely would check check this one out from your library. Absolutely. Then we have a it. pair, um, Antoinette and Gaston. Yeah. So so, so I, it was funny. I read Antoinette. He read Gaston. <laughs> so I liked Gaston. Um, basically, it's the story of swapped at birth. Um, so basically, uh, a, a woman, uh, the, the poodle. There's a French the poodle, bulldog and a pull, poodle, yeah, poodle, and, and they, one of the one puppy of the babies, litter yeah, is one, switched. One of the babies is switched. And Gaston, they meet at a park, and they realize that uh, <laughs> that's not my mom. That's that's my mom, and they get swapped. But the thing is, Gaston was trained to be a poodle, and they have certain characteristics and, yeah. and, and mannerisms. And then when he goes and lives with the bulldogs, his real mom and his real brothers and sisters, he, he could not fit in, and vice yeah. versa. The poodle that was at the bulldog family was in the poodle household and it was like a terror and crazy yeah. and they didn't like him and so then they end up switching back so it's really really thoughtful story and I think this is a story from Gaston's point of view and this uh, is the story from Antoinette's right so it's, it's the two differing point of views they're both really great books yeah. so either one that you can get I think they've got yeah. just you know really great illustrations yeah, re really fun uh, our daughter really liked these and yeah, spoke she did. to her so I think these are highly recommended yes yeah. especially since now she's kind of in like a quasi kindergarten fundergarten type of thing and so she's with a lot of kids that are, you know, you know, everyone's different. Everything. Everyone's different. An, I, I like that. It was a nice story to kind of introduce at this time frame. All right, Madeline. Yeah, Madeline's a classic. Yeah. I wasn't sure the story itself. It's a classic story, but it goes through. If you can turn through the pages, it goes yeah. through so many classic Parisian landmarks. Yeah. So you know, it starts with all the girls. The in classic the line. Parisian orphanage. <laughs> it's, it's actually a girls' school, it's girls school. <laughs> but they they end up going through different scenes of Paris, and so we were able to talk about the different landmarks yeah, yeah. through it. And this was one of our daughter's favorite books when she was in preschool, so we felt like we really 
We couldn't skip Madeline. Yeah, it's, it's one. It's one that we owned. Um, it was we did I think with for Torchlight. Um, um, I I think it was actually Paprika? maybe Blossom and Root. Roots. Yeah, so early years. But either, anyways, either one, yeah. it was one of our daughter's favorite preschool um, books, and That's she really was cool like, "Wait shop, a minute, yeah. Paris. That's where Madeline is." So <laughs> we went ahead and checked it out. It's a classic. So going back to I think a couple episodes ago, we talked about maybe bringing in a lot more of the tabletop kind of coffee table books that have beautiful pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. And we have been to Europe. Uh, we went. We had, we did a nice stint in France, and yeah. before we went, and we we've been collecting books ourselves. So we, we these are off our own shelf that we have. So we would recommend get some sort Something of like big this. coffee table books yeah. that have great pictures that your kids can dive into. These are the type of books that our kids look at while we're doing big read alouds. Yeah. They look through all the pictures and just absorb it. Um, you can get anything like this from the library, get it on yeah. either an artist or, a, or like these are on a museum. Yeah. Either way, I think it's a great thing for kids to just kind of absorb. We don't need to read these books, no. but then if your child does get interested in something, and our child did point out several times, well, what's this about? We could mm -hmm. read the caption. Um, this is about exposure after all, this, yeah. this whole around the world journey. Well, so it was we like including these big yeah. coffee table and, and especially books. with this with the Louvre and Musée d'Orsay, it was, it was a nice pairing when yeah. we were doing videos and learning about the famous painters. Mm -hmm. You can dig into these, these, these coffee table books and actually pull up real images. Um, just a different type of, you know, yeah, I could do it on Google Maps, Google in five seconds on images, but being able to thumb through something was just very nice. There's something about physical books that's just yeah. different. So next we did a lot of movies. You know, there's a lot we, of good French. Um, we started with the classic. Beauty and the Beast, should have won Best the Picture. The 1991, yeah, 1991. No. two. Yeah. We, we've talked extensively about the, the live action movies <laughs> on our podcast. Go watch one of our movie reviews where you get uh, Ariel and Siskel and Ebert here uh, <laughs> talking about movies in our podcast. But we but did yeah. Be Beauty and the Beast. They watched the original. It was just <laughs> a good start. And then we watched Ratatouille. Uh, we did that on Disney Plus. Then we watched yeah. Ratatouille on Disney Plus because... Ratatouille. It's all about food. It's all about Paris. We couldn't say no. Um, yeah. And then we watched a movie that our daughter had seen last year that she really loved, which is called Leap. I believe it's on Netflix. Yes. yes, this is on Netflix as well. And this is a story of a dancer, a girl, an orphan who comes to Paris and wants to become a ballet dancer yep. and her story. Um, I didn't think it was like the world's greatest movie. If you she, only have time. She really likes it because she, she likes to dance. Right. Um, she really enjoyed I've both noticed, our girls. I've noticed all week she's been stretching and putting her legs up on the table. Right. She's been trying it. to do so, ballet moves. So she's been, yeah. So incorporating the movies and the, and the content that we're doing into her real life. I think so. if you only have time for one movie, I would watch Ratatouille. I think yeah. it is the best of all the things that we watch. But if you have time for more than one, uh, Leap was really good too. Absolutely. And we enjoyed it. So going from Ratatouille, straight into the kitchen, because you know we love food. We do. Um, and we weren't sick this time, so we got to eat. <laughs> we could taste <laughs> the Like food. last time. Uh, first thing we did is I, I, made, I made baguettes with the girls. If you want to go look at it, it's on our Instagram feed. It's on Instagram. Mm, have you posted the atrocity yet? that I did. But I'll post it. <laughs> She's the bread they, expert. You know what? They didn't look great, but they tasted delicious. They tasted delicious. And our kids made them themselves. I, I want to so. stress that it tasted delicious. Mm. Maybe wasn't winning any beauty contests. We cut them. Well, we had them with some butter, and then we cut them in half, and we, we made, made a bunch of sandwiches yeah. with ham and brie. Yeah. So we kind of did a little bit of. We got kind of in essence two meals out of one. We made right. the baguettes, and then we kind of had like a French Parisian cafe you know, dinner. It was really kind of Yeah, cool. that was really, yeah. it was fun. And then we with also- With the light vinaigrette. With the light vinaigrette with salad. <laughs> On the salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, next thing we did, um, well, because why not? Nutella, crepes. Yeah, we why had not? to make crepes. I mean, you have to make crepes. Crepes well, are really easy. And if you haven't made crepes before yes. and they're intimidating to you because you think you need to either buy a special crepe pan or you need to take your skillet and turn it upside down, you don't need to do that. Don't do that. Just get a big enough flat bottom skillet that you have enough space because you can, you know, and just don't pour so much crepe that it's going to go all the way to the edge. Pour a little bit and mm -hmm. then just take your skillet and swirl it a little bit oh. with your hand. This is, so kinda, this is the movement. We're kind of getting... Just swirl it a bit. Are you trying to be babish now or something? <laughs> if you do that, then you can make a nice thin crepe in a regular pan. Um, you just don't want something that's got shape to it, like no, a skillet no. that's that's got shape you you really want like a flat bottom like maybe a, a skillet fryer that's what we use it's just a regular non-stick and making crepe batter you also don't need to use a food processor or a, a blender just whisk it really well mm -hmm. so there's no lumps um, it's like a thin pancake they're super easy to make don't be intimidated by crepes please and don't do anything weird with your pans just use a regular one it's yeah, fine <laughs> for for kids it's fine <laughs> and stuffing is only nutella so and bananas and bananas as well so i mean if you want or just nutella just nutella 
So we, we did that, but <clears throat> the girls really, really enjoyed the, the cooking. That was about the extent of what we did in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, next, we went into a lot of videos. So again, when we do in the videos, we, you know, we'll show them a, def a bunch of different videos and once in a while, something will stick and, and kind of catch and we will you know, kind of you know, mine that vein as long yeah. as we can. Uh, this time it was castles because why not? Castles. Yeah, we watched some of the Rick Steves Rick overview Steve's, videos. But, but then we jumped into some and then additional she videos. wanted to see, like, she was like, chateaus. Chateaus. Castles. Castles. So we watched a <laughs> bunch more videos all about, there's so many in the Loire Valley. And yeah. we watched, we watched about Versailles. There's so many great palaces. And when we watched Rick Steves too, he talked a little bit about the landmarks. And mm -hmm. then our daughter wanted to go further into more of the mm -hmm. landmarks. We watched videos just about Mont Saint Michel and just about yeah. the Eiffel Tower or the Arc de Triomphe and, you know, more about the history. So we watched quite a few videos this time because Absolutely. there's so many great landmarks and so many great castles yeah. <laughs> in France. And the content um, is a little bit more involved here. Like I know it was, it was more of a struggle in South America when you're kind of getting these really well-polished videos. We're getting a lot more of those in Europe, um, you know, helping with the Rick Steves, but yeah. there's a lot more. I there's think, a lot of content. There's there. a lot of content here and so you'll, you'll basically have your pick of the litter here <laughs> Yeah. Um, to pick the quality of the video. So we had a really good time there. So that was France. A little bit of a, we didn't go two weeks. We we didn't go one week. We went it was like, like a week and a half because it <coughs> cannot be contained in one week. But uh, but now we go to Deutschland. Yes. Wir gehen nach so Deutschland. I studied French for five years. Matt studied German no, for no, five years. I didn't study German for four years, twice. I struggled through German <laughs> well, as a requirement for my physics degree. I just want to say when we did our four weeks in Europe before we had kids, it was like our last hurrah. When we went to France, I fairly successfully spoke French, but when we went to Germany, we stayed in a hotel where the little, this little boutique hotel and this woman spoke nothing but German and it was rough. It was really, really rough. Yes, I hung my we, head. Oh, we almost didn't get out of there. We had no, we had no Wi-Fi or cell signal, so we couldn't like oh. do Google Translate. We so. were on a one-month romantic trip through Europe. <laughs> we didn't need Wi-Fi. We didn't need funny. cell signals. It was funny because we the were, people understand me. We were me. trying to ask her how to get tickets to go up the mountain, and the next morning we ended up with a whole bag of rolls hung on our doorknob. And so I, I think she may have misinterpreted whatever you I said to, as I needed lots of bread listen, in the morning. I might have said brot instead of something else. And, <laughs> and I understand that, but, but listen, you enjoyed the rolls. They were, anyway. they were really good. So we've just, They made for good, good snacking. We've just started Germany, I think, today. I read a bunch of German stuff today. So hopefully we'll have another video in yeah. about a week and a half as we make our way through Germany. So we look forward to seeing you guys in about two weeks again. So look forward to seeing you guys. Take Bye. care. Bye.